Now, gents, there are some pretty interesting uniforms out there. The Vatican Swiss Guard. The U.S. Space Force. ISS, this is Houston. The Mongolian Army State Guard. The Queen's Guard. Well, gents, in today's video, we're going to cover them all and more as I go through and critique them based off of their style and functionality. First up on this list, and the one that you guys have been asking a lot about in the comments, the Vatican Swiss Guard. Now, the first question here is, why did a city-state in Italy leverage Swiss mercenaries? Well, it turns out 500 years ago, Switzerland did not have the monopoly on banks, and they were exporting well-trained military men. In the year 1506, Pope Julius II established the Pontifical Swiss Guard, making it one of the oldest continuous military units in existence. Now, why does the Pope need his own special guard unit? Because if you know your history, 25 popes over the last thousand years have actually died of unnatural causes. And uh, yeah, so the Pope trusts in God, but he also trusts in cold, hard steel. And to this day, you still see the Swiss Guard use their ceremonial weapon, the halberd, also known as the pike, which is an excellent weapon for taking down a horseman or keeping an attacker at bay. That being said, they do incorporate modern weapons, so you will find that they carry firearms. Now, the uniform we're talking about today is their gala uniform. I know they've got other uniforms, but this is the one that if you visit Vatican City, you will see, you will recognize, and you will probably take a picture of the guys wearing this. Now, what's interesting about this uniform is the overall silhouette and design. Now, it was designed 100 years ago, but it was based off medieval designs and pictures that were taken. So the idea is to harken back to the days when the Swiss Guard was first established. Now the colors, we can't talk about this uniform without talking about the yellow, blue, and red. This is a uniform that easily you can spot one of these guards a mile away. And maybe it's designed for that. The flow of the fabric also is actually pretty nice. When you look at, I mean, these guys have full freedom of movement, although I think functionally these uniforms are not that great. They're probably getting hot. In addition, I can see that fabric getting caught up on something really easily. Now, each uniform takes about 30 hours to make. They're all made by hand. And whenever a guard is through with his duty, he is discharged, that uniform is destroyed, which makes sense because they want to keep track of these things. Because I could actually see somebody with a lot of confidence getting one and walking in, acting like they, you know, they're actually somebody, although I'm sure that they would get stopped. But uh, just the idea of somebody out there representing the guard and not being an official part of the unit. Yeah, I can see why they destroy the uniforms, sadly. They also incorporate armor into this uniform. Uniform, which is really interesting because a number of the pieces actually date back to the 15th century, whenever the guard was first established. Now, notice they don't have any armor down on their legs. Makes sense because if you're going to wear armor like this, usually you are on horseback. Armor like this is heavy. It, there are hundreds of pieces here. A lot of it you don't even see, but uh, yeah, really cool. And they've got their own blacksmith who will actually remake pieces as they wear out. All right, so where to rank this uniform? This one was tough. Initially, I wanted to put this in WTF because I didn't like the look of it, but the more history I learned about it, the more I saw that, you know, these guys are wearing it really well. They care about these uniforms. There's a lot of history with this. They have been around for a hundred years and they're designed off something older. I loved how they brought in armor that immediately knocked it up. So, uh, I'm going to put these into general officer bright idea. I really think that the uniform is not functional, but, uh, I do think it looks good and I love their history. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right there in the middle. Next up, we've got the U.S. Space Force. And the fact that we actually do have a Space Force is just so strange to me. But established in 2019, the Space Force is here. Branching out of the Air Force, it made sense. They initially had Air Force uniforms, but they have unveiled their prototype uniforms, and here they are. Now, my first thought is, wow, that's a lot better than I expected it to be. I actually like the fact that it's a very muted uniform. The first thing you're probably going to notice right here in the front, we've got the overlap with the buttons over on the side. And it really is a uniform. I haven't seen this type of style for a couple hundred years. It's just not popular in modern day uniforms. Usually you have the buttons right down the center. Um, it's going to actually cost a little bit less. This is going to cost a bit more and you're going to have to have really good tailoring on the fit, especially for women. Anytime you've just got, you know, just in the chest area uh, for a man that 
is really in shape. If you've got a lot of a drop, again, this uniform is going to have to be tailored to look good. But overall in the color, I think that they did pretty good with that midnight blue. You got the platinum sleeve braids right there for commissioned officers, a midnight blue necktie that matches the jacket, a platinum colored shirt looks white to me though. And I'm sure on the buttons that they've got US insignias along with the Space Force emblem. You know, pretty good. And what's interesting is it draws all the attention to the fruit salad. The fruit salad is what basically we call all those ribbons and stuff. And we know in the Air Force that you guys just throw them out. You get one every day. In the Marine Corps, you're lucky to get one once in your entire career. But uh, yeah, we just look at the Air Force and it's like, man, how many lives have these guys lived that they can get that many badges? <laughs> I also like the simple use of the epaulette right there. You can put the rank on this. We see this in most U.S. military uniforms, and it's very easy to spot. You're also going to have right here on the sleeve uh, a number of lines, which we see in the Navy, and that also indicates basically the rank. Having said all that, I did find some serious issues. So first up, General Raymond, I appreciate you bringing these officers on stage because I can compare your uniform with theirs. But my goodness, come on, go visit a tailor. Look at the trousers on both of these officers. I mean, neither one of them knows apparently how to tailor. They were going to be up on stage showing these things off. Get in. And General Raymond, I mean, look at the bottom of your cuffs. I mean, go into a tailor. This is a simple fix. You can do it at your house. You can do it. I mean, bad tailoring just takes a beautiful uniform and messes it up. And next up, let's talk about plagiarism. So I went into the future. 202070 to be exact. Starfleet. Look at what Star Trek is wearing in the future. Obviously, somebody is a fan of the movies, saw this style and said, you know what? I'm going to steal this. I mean, you even look at the logo of the Space Force. They obviously stole this from Star Trek and I'm, you know, not bad for inspiration. I, I actually love Star Trek, but to not give credit and not go with a solid red uniform versus this blue. I mean, come on. Like, yeah, you guys, you guys see what I'm talking about? All right. So where am I going to place these guys? Well, I wanted to put them in pretty friggin' awesome, but because they don't know how to tailor their clothing and because they stole this from Star Trek, I got to put them down into WTF. I'll tell you if they fix it, if they give credit to Star Trek, they change it to red and they tailor those uniforms. Boom. We're going to talk. We're talking stylish right here. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor, smash that like button. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that, Hey, I want to see more videos like this from Antonio. Next up, we've got the Queen's Royal Guards, specifically the five regiments of foot guards. They are the Grenadier Guards, the Coldstream Guards, the Scott Guards, the Irish Guards, and the Welsh Guards. Now, most of us tourists just simply know these guys as the Red Guards with the big hats, but those bearskin hats, if you look closely, distinguish the actual unit. So right here, you've got the Grenadier Guard. Notice the white. Next, we've got the Coldstream Guard. Notice the red. Next up, we've got the Scots Guard. No color at all. The Irish Guard with blue. Why in the world do they not have green? That's that's what I'm wondering here. And then we've got the Welsh Guard with green and white. I mean, shouldn't this be the Irish? Now, in general, all these guys are called the Queen's Guards, and that's because we have a queen right now on the British throne. Uh, whenever she steps down or her son takes her place, then all of a sudden they're going to be called the King's Guards. So you'll have to, I guess I'll have to update the video then, right? Now they've got both summer and winter uniforms, but we're going to be talking about the scarlet ones because those are the ones that just grab attention. Definitely, you know, I think about, I'm an American here, so I'm thinking the red coats are coming, the red coats are coming. We think about our war of independence and fighting them when they were in their red jackets. And that's what I see in it. But overall, I have to look at this and think, wow, these, this is pretty intimidating. You've got guys that are in great shape. This is just a well cut uniform. I love the colors. I love the braiding. I, uh, you know, the white belt actually does really well. And that bear skin hat, I know it's probably incredibly impractical, but man, does it make, it makes you look bigger, tougher. I wouldn't want to mess with a guy and you can't even see where his eyes are at. So you don't even know if he's watching you overall, just a really good looking uniform, a good use of color. Yes, it's bright, but man, they make it work. And these are cut to be on point. I guess when it comes to the British, they know how to tailor their uniforms. I also love the fact that they carry a fully functional bullpup. Not really great choice of weapon. I'd recommend maybe looking at the X95, but in any case, having that bayonet right there at the end, and in case you're not familiar, a bullpup is where you got the handle ahead of the breech and allows still for a longer 16 inch barrel, which increases velocity and accuracy. So gents, if you can't tell, I got a hard on for the Queens guard. I'm going to put them up the very top high speed, low drag. Love this uniform. Next up, we've got the Mongolian state armor guard, also known as the special battalion of the guard of honor. 
Now, the Mongolian State Armor Guard was founded in 1955, but if you look at these uniforms, you're thinking, hey, this seems like it's going back to a totally different era, and you would be right. So, apparently, they were inspired by Genghis Khan. Uh, makes a lot of sense. I mean, the guy conquered pretty much all of Asia and parts of Europe. The whole Mongol dynasty, that's what this is supposed to harken back to. When I look at the uniforms overall, I think they're actually pretty decent looking. You know, initially, the bright colors, that blue, the red, you know, the accents, I thought it was a little bit too much, but functionally, the uniform seems like it would work like you'd be able to move easily in this. I also love the fact that they're carrying the old SKS. If you're not familiar with this weapon, it was basically the Soviet uh, gift to the world. It was replaced by the AK-47. But talk about a weapon that's relatively accurate, cheap to manufacture, and it just gets the job done. Why would they go with this versus the AK-47, which is much more effective? Because the SKS just looks better. That, you know, wood, wooden handle. I mean, this is a good looking ceremonial weapon along with the bayonet on it. Uh, so overall, you know, I definitely, uh, you know, was pretty impressed with what I saw. All right, Jen, so I almost put these guys in the Gobi, but I'm going to go ahead and knock them up to pretty freaking awesome. They were right at the bottom of that tier, but uh, yeah, I think it's just a decent looking uniform, maybe overuse of too much color, but uh, yeah, you know, I think it looks, I think they look pretty good. Next up, we've got the Malaysian guards from the Royal Malay Regiment. So first up, I got to give kudos to these guys to wearing a uniform like this in incredibly hot weather. I know we got some of you guys over in and around Malaysia, but man, incredibly hot and humid. Yet these guys are pulling it off. They are relatively looking good. And my favorite part about this uniform, the fact that they brought in the traditional Sam Ping. Also known as the Cane de Gang, this is basically what we were in the West would call a skirt. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh man, this looks like they just wrapped it around. Is this actually historically accurate? Is this traditional? I did my research. This is right spot on. And so for that, man, I got to hand it to them. They took the best of the West and they were able to blend it in with their culture. And again, you know, if the white right here, I was thinking naval uniforms in the U.S. Navy, they got the whites. Uh, we got the epaulets on here. You've got actually, you know, the whole fruit salad, the boot boots look functional. You've got a modern weapon that they're carrying here. But yeah, as soon as they bring in that green right there in and around the waist, I thought, you know, this, this looks really good. This right here. And then when you watch them on parade, you see pictures of these guys actually performing, moving around, very functional. The only critique, if any, would actually maybe to make the medals a bit smaller, although they seem to stay in place and maybe go for a cover, a hat, basically, that's going to better shield the eyes from the sun. But, uh, you know, for ceremonial use and overall sticking with tradition. And I love the fact that they got a bayonet on that weapon. Uh, yeah, I got to give these guys, I'm going to put them up high speed, low drag. And for you guys over in Monaco, let's talk about the carabiners du prince. Literally, it translates into the prince's riflemen. These guys are part of the Monacan military. And overall, I'd have to say they've got their winter, their summer uniforms. They look good. Now, their day-to-day -day uniforms, very different, but when you look at their traditional dress, they've done a good job of actually maintaining their history. Specifically, the white trefoil, epaulets, the spats, all of these have been worn since the 19th century. The cut on their uniform looks good. I like how they got the braid over on the left shoulder. This is something I wish more military units would bring back. I know, not practical, but it just looks cool to have those braids on there. I also like their cover. I like the style of this hat. Anyone know the style of this hat? Let me know if you know it down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, just a good looking uniform, especially, again, I really like their summer uniform. That white just stands out and works well with the hot weather. So where am I going to put the Prince's Rifleman? How about right here at Pretty Friggin' Awesome? Next up, we've got Germany. Now, with the war going on in Ukraine, I think I read the other day that Germany just doubled their military budget over the next decade, which is probably a good thing, especially if they're going to spend some money on their uniforms. Look at these. Okay, so first up, let's talk about the fit. You guys got to work on your tailoring. I know Germans are all about practicality, keeping costs low, keeping it, you know, focused in on just performing, but a good fitted uniform is going to look better. Next up, let's talk about the lack of color. This is your dress uniform. And I'm not saying you got to, you know, the gray and the white. I mean, it looks decent, but if they just had interjected some more color, the green beret really doesn't do anything. That's not really color. You should have gone, I mean, bringing in some red, bringing in some scarlet, find something in your history, your dramatic history. Don't, I mean, go back a few hundred years. There were tons of cool stuff. Bring in some skulls, some crossbones, but I mean, don't bring in anything, you know, from the Nazi era. Although, you know, they did, the SS did have some crazy looking uniforms uh, designed by Hugo, but yeah, that's a whole nother video. Point being is these things could be so much more. 
All right, Jen, so where do you think we should rank that German uniform? Down at the very bottom, effed up beyond all repair. Now, we'll be nice. We'll put them in WTF. I think they've got some potential. You got to bring in some colors, guys. Uh, what do you think? Uh, if you disagree, let me know in the comments below. But guys, check out this video next. So I talk about other military uniforms from around the world that you need to check out. Some bizarre ones. If you enjoyed today's video, you're going to love this one. I go into a lot of detail, a lot of history, and uh, I think you guys are going to love this video. So go check it out, guys, if you're interested in military uniforms, history, and my thoughts on them.